So this one is known as Resurrected Wreckage, aka SCP-1264. SCP-1264, Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-1264 is located 75 meters below the Earth, ocean surface of the South Pacific at 48 degrees, 52.6 S, 123 degrees, 23.6 W. I mean, west. I don't know why it's a W. It is be held into place by eight pairs of ten KT deadweight anchors chained together and attached to SCP-1264. World Task Force Gamma-6, a.k.a. Deep Feeders, will be tasked with performing bi-monthly examinations done by remote submersibles in order to inspect the integrity of the anchors and chain. 450 naval contact mines will be positioned around, over, and under SCP-1264. The mines will be placed 20 meters from each other in order to sympathetically detonate any event of a contact. Shipping lanes and aquatic anomalies such as SCP-1264 2467. Let's see what that is real quick. Oh, I think this is... Yeah, this is the moving ship that's on its own. I think this is also... Yeah, it's the one that goes violent towards other ships. Okay. So that's what that is. Okay. Will be diverted in order to avoid a containment area since detainment. SB-1264 has exhibited no activity, but remains buoyant. Description. SCP-1264 is an amalgamation of once the, re the relic warships in various pieces of float sam slash jet sam that have been adhered together by, osh or by organic secretions. The main body of SCP-1264 is made of five World War II era warships that have been that were used as target ships as part of the Operation Crossroads atomic bottom tests performed at the Bikini Atoll in 1946. The following ships that make up SCP-1264 were confirmed to have sunk after these tests: U.S. Saratoga, Lexington class aircraft carrier, Nagato Nagato class dreadnought, Prince Hugen. Admiral Hipper Class Heavy Cruiser, USS Slamson, Manhattan Class Destroyer, USSS Apagon, ba Balo Class Submarine, and various sections of a yard oiler. Survey reports of the wreckage performed at Guinea Atoll in 1954 showed a number of sunk ships missing from the lagoon. In response, the U.S. Navy built and sunk several dummy ships in their place in order to cover up any evidence of the missing original ships. USS government then initiated Operation Castle under the guise of nuclear testing, but was actually intended for the purpose of creating sufficient nuclear fallout as to make the Bikini Atoll area uninhabitable. SCP-1264 was the first documented on January 30th, 1959, 56 kilometers south of Cape Farewell, Greenland, when it engaged and sunk the MS Hands and tough during his main maiden voyage. SCP-1264 shows only moderate corrosion and damage in contradiction of U.S. Navy records on the individual ships. The centerpiece of, of 1264 is the artifact carrier with several large jib cranes attached to its deck. The other ships are fastened to the sides of the centerpiece by means of hardened secretions. All the other ships are are missing their substructure or conning towers. Other float sam and jet sam have been attached to fill the empty spaces between the ships and roughly makes up 12% of the 1264's total mass. 1264 is armed with various pieces of artillery, artillery torpedoes, AA guns, and depth charges. However, only several pieces of artillery have ever been in use, which indicates that either the remaining are non-operational or, or there are insufficient resources to operate them. 1264 spends most of its time underwater as a submersible. Above the water, 1264 is capable of speeds up to 31 knots. 
1264 is maintained by a crew that has been designated 1264-A, each fit inside a U.S. Navy standard rubber diving dress and are equipped with a Mark V diving helmet and weighted boots. Dash A are headless humanoid entities closely related to sea cucumbers. Dash A are also connected by a flexible artillery cord, roughly 90 meters long, that is in turn connected to 1264's interior. Dash A displays a deep understanding of 1264's mechanical and electrical systems. Dash A Officially performs repairs and maintenance with what is available within their designated areas. Dash A are characteristically slow, obstinate, and exhibit no real intelligence of their own. Dash A also secrete a strong adhesive through their gloves that act as a waterproof sealant binder filler and cement in order to maintain the structural integrity and buoyancy of 1264. All of, of 1264 steerage and weapon systems are operated by Dash A. In return, Dash A is commanded by a single entity designated Dash 1. Dash 1's appearance is unknown and only physical evidence for Dash 1's existence are the artery cords that connect Dash A to the ship's interior. These cords are lined with strands of neural tissue and do not originate from Dash A. This indicates that Dash A is directly connected to a separate biological entity, or that Dash 1 is actually a collective consciousness of Dash A. Dash 1 has proven on numerous occasions to be a hostile and skillful tactician of naval warfare. Dash 1 has been reported in some cases to transmit radio signals via ELF radio. To date, Dash 1 has engaged redacted civilian and military vessels and has sunk redacted of them. Through Dash 1 has shown a preference for passenger ships over other vessels. After destruction of a vessel, Dash A will then throw fishing nets on top of survivors floating in the water. These nets are then attached to the hull of the sinking vessel or an anchor so that it will drag down the net and, it connect and its contents. Post-incident recovery teams using submersibles are unable to locate any courses underwater after they are dragged to the bottom. In Redacted, 1264 was involved in protracted engagement with MTF Tau-11 aka can -oper openers and was effectively suppressed. In its apparent condition, 1264 was then towed out under armed escort to its current containment area for indefinite detainment. Autopsy report 1264-A-8 ID BD, BPD 110094-67F Decedent 1264-A-1 Age unknown Race unknown Sex unknown Length 177 centimeters Weight 111.3 kilograms Location of autopsy, research site 45. Autopsy authorized by Dr. W. Hermes. Very post incident 1264 12 D. Clothing equipment Mark V diving helmet, standard U.S. Navy diving dress, and weighted boot. External examination multiple blasts and fragment injuries to the chest and abdomen include amputation of one of the tower extremities. There are multiple pen penetrating fragment injuries of the, of the anterior thorax. Bilateral symmetry is present in a physical appearance. Four extremities branch out from the central body, two upper and two lower. The upper extremities branch out again into four smaller distal appendages. This allows the subject to operate inside the suit by taking on nearly humanoid form. History, in injured by explosive munitions. Gross description. Skin, a mem membranous e epidermis and dermis are both present. A thin layer of cl calcified structures lies below the dermis and is made of isolated microscopic ocellos joined by connective tissue. Head and neck. Head is totally absent. Mark V diving helmet is only filled with seawater and detritus. An open neck casually serves 
as the anus expelling waste into the helmet. Skeletal system. An endoskeleton made of reinforced calcareous rods, plates, and bulbs provides upright support to the body and extremities. These structures are not true bones and as they lack marrow, nerves, endosystem, and perosterm. Structures are held tightly in place by the surrounding radial muscles. Muscle tissue. Tissue is dark brown in color and formed in a circular pattern around the endoskeleton. A water vascular system is present to allow elongation and introversion of the muscle tissue. Water is not actually used in hydro hydraulics, but rather a cellulomic fluid. A circulatory system. Hundreds of miniature apulae are present within the muscle tissues that pump the celomic fluid. Phagocytic homoceliomites, somewhat similar in function to the white blood cells of vertebrates, are formed within the hamal vessels and travel throughout the body cavity via celomic fluid. The celomocytes also seem to be responsible for carrying the hemoglobin. Respiratory and digestive system, oxygenated and deoxygenated celomic fluid is circulated via the artery cord protruding from the dorsal side. This cord is it's the body's lifeline for both oxygen and nutrition, similar to a fetus connected to the mother's placenta. Body cavity like skills and stomach, the cord directly branches off into the intestines and major vessels once inside the body. Nervous system. Brain is completely absent. Nerve tissue stems from the thin notochord like structure that is included in the artery cord. Small eye spots are present, present on the distal upper appendages. Other comments. The system is interconnected glands, fills the entire ventral thorax cavity. These glands are responsible for secreting the specialized adhesive secretions are then pumped throughout through the upper extremities and out the distal orifices. Other lab procedures, toxolo tox toxology, photography, x-ray, microscopic examination, the specialist evidence, toxologist, vitreous fluids, lead investigator, clothing, equipment, more custodian, body. Now, items not specifically stored in lab 62 vault are, are to be incinerated. Dr. W.H. Summary. Body exhibits strong physical and inevitable traits with echoderms, especially holothuridia, or sea cucumbers. Throughout the body, it includes many independent systems that is completely dependent on the, on the cord for sustenance and, and direction. Control of the body is granted through the cord through some other intelligence, as it is evident how the neural pathway ends inside the body cavity, but originates elsewhere. The body should be considered as a physical extension of, of this intelligence. This entity must be made of the same anatomical characteristics as 1264-A-1 in order to utilize and manipulate these extensions. This entity, if it is in fact a singular consciousness, would, would have to be extremely adapted to handling an enormous amount of input and output signals simultaneously in order to manage all of the all of 1264-A. Alright. MTF after actual reports 1264-D-2. SB involved 1264. MTF involved Tau 11. Date March 11, 1999. Location 15 kilometers north of the coast of Hawaiian Island of Kauai. Preamble engagement is authorized after a cruise ship is attacked by 1264. MTF Tau 5 is dispatched to the area with five Pegasus class hydrofoils and one Juliet class submarine from Marine Com Command L9. CMS 3 was, was standby and waiting clearance from the, the PHM Rapid Response Unit in order to launch. It's P-500 missiles, without jeopardizing civilians. Upon arrivals of the PHM unit, the cruise ship was on fire and taking on water while list listing steeply to port. 
Dash A was seen from a large opening on the starboard side throwing fishing nets over the survivors in the water. 1301. MTF Tau 5 PHM unit made contact with Tau 64 while Dash A attempted to ensnare the survivors. PHM Dash 7 and Dash 9 then broke formation to engage Tau Dash A directly using their 76mm guns. Dash A was quickly suppressed by, by PHM-7 and Dash 9, fired along 1264 starboard hull. 1303. PHM-8, 10, and 11 fired their harpoon missiles directly into the stern of 1264 from a distance of 750 miles away. 1264 was hit and took damage to two of its rudders. 1304. 1264 support side turns all turn 90 degrees to their 9 o'clock position just before 1264 rapidly dove into the water. Afterwards, underwater explosions and floating debris were, were seen trailing off the west. PHM 7 and 9 investigate during this time. CMS 3 made positive radio communication with Dash 1. 1310. Behind the remaining Three PHMs, 1264 partially resurfaced just enough to expose its port side turrets. 1264 was positioned with, with the PHM starboard hull directly in its line of fire. Six of the port's batteries, 144mm guns, fired into the three PHMs, effectively destroying them. PHM 7 then relayed to CMS 3 that 1264 was clear of the civilians. CMS 3 then launched two P500 missiles targeted. At 1264. 1311. 1264 then began to move towards the capsizing cruise ship and fired two of its 410mm guns at the exposed Bilge Kell at the distance of only 175 meters. The ship exploded and splintered into several sections. 1264 then plowed through the floating debris. The P 500 missiles active radar was unable to distinguish 1264 from the wreckage and they missed the target. 1313. 1264 launched Mark 14 torpedoes at PHM 7 and 9. 1264 collected the remaining nets of the internal passengers and dove underwater for a second time. Both PHMs easily outmaneuvered the torpedoes. CMS 3 was then ordered by Marine Command 09 to track 1264 with sonar in, in pursuit. The remaining PHMs attempted to retrieve any survivors left in the water that were able to avoid the nets. Only 19 out of the 215 bodies were recovered from the scene. 1510. CMS-3 lost contact with, with 1264, 55 kilometers northeast of the incident. Addendum. During the, the, this incident, 1306 and 1310, CMS-3 made positive radio communication with Dash-1 over ELF, ELF radio signals. Below is the auto, audio transcript between the operator and Dash-1 after its initial dive. Dash-1, deep gurgling noises. Unknown contact. Your order to resurface or be destroyed. Do you copy? Continued gurgling. Unknown contact resurfaced or be destroyed. Do you copy? Gurgling pauses, pauses. A deep voice is then heard. The interlopers want my compliance granted. Unknown contact. You have two minutes to resurface. This is an ultimatum. Do you copy? Yes. Unknown contact respond. Now banging is heard in the background. Repairing to resurface. At this time, 1264 resurfaced and destroyed three of the PHMs. Drown with me. Static. Post encounter summary. The survivors were debriefed and given Class B amnestics before ha being handed over to the U.S. Navy. A cover story was distributed through the media that the cruise ships sunk 
after suffering a catastrophic engine fire, which killed mo almost all of the passengers. A false investigation of the of the accident was also initiated in order to suppress growing public suspicion. On June 8, 1999, 1264 was reported in photograph by a fishing trawler in the Indian Ocean. Photos were intercepted and revealed that all damage done to 1264 during incident 1264-D-2 had been repaired. Additional spending was later approved for MTF TAUF 11 for expanding its fleet to include aerial support, acquisition of heavier armament, and installation of passive sonar buoys at strategic locations. That was a long SCP. I didn't have to read the MTF thing, but in case they mention it, it's best we know. Like, they might not get into these two level 2 access required areas. Yeah, so don't mess. Just don't mess with 264. Yep. Yeah. Alright. Oh, wait. First, a thumbnail. Boom. Okay. Clickbait. Because that is not the diver suit. And they also do not at all, have the SCB logo on them. Oh, fair. Yeah, that's very much clickbait. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's supposed to be like a rubber, you know, like that Scooby-Doo diver suit thing. It's supposed to look like that. Not this. I don't know what the fuck this is supposed to look like. And plus, this is made out of metal. I'm pretty sure diver suits can't be made out of metal or you just sink. They thought the foundation would advertise themselves. <laughs> yeah. They also have dead bodies in the background, too. Hmm. It's not as much clickbait as this. So, I would have to say probably three. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, probably three. Hey, at least they didn't make it a female. Alright, here we go. Wait, did they have the license? Yeah! Alright. And three. <laughs> Ever tits out, true. Yeah, and now, we see how bad it is. Yes, that's what, what it's supposed to look like. Wait, what the fuck? Isn't. Going in for a closer look. First Lieutenant James Chen wasn't a rookie. He knew how these things went. He had refused promotion three times now. He liked the field work. He moved towards the body floating in the water. It resembled a man in a standard issue US diving suit, but the helmet was empty and filled with water. Detritus floated around in the empty helmet, and some sort of fluid was oozing out from the gloves. On the back of the suit, an umbilical cord stretched off into the distance. He grabbed the suit and pulled it back with him. Welcome back. Today I bring you SCP-1264. Remember to subscribe and like. Pressure stabilizing. Water evacuation. 65% complete. As the water disappeared, Okay. He heard the hiss of the pressure door open. Took Why is he enough. in every fucking that video? Bag of bones? <laughs> I know you're supposed to be some genius doctor and all, but bag of bones to describe what's technically a bag of meat? Sloppy. Even for a dirt bag like you. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like someone is ready for another court martial. Just say the word, Chen. Chen glared back at him. <laughs> Here you go, Doc. One bag of meat as requested. Claw smiled. Drag it into the lab. Do I really need to be here for this? Look, I know you like to be out there, busting numbers and taking hits, but you need to understand the anatomy of this thing if you're going to capture it alive. Capture it alive? It's a massive ship, bigger than a pair of aircraft carriers. 
How do you expect me to catch a ship by looking at this bag of slime? The ship's not important. It's what's controlling the ship. That's the real prize. Klaus pulled the helmet yeah. off the dive suit. Water rushed out onto the floor. He cut through the soft rubber, revealing what was inside. It was a large, slimy, sea cucumber-like creature. It had a central body and four appendages splitting off to fill okay, the arm. Okay, not bad gloves. so far. This thing was mimicking a human. He pulled the gloves off to find four more finger-like appendages, allowing it to work and grip like a human. In the back of where the neck would have been, the umbilical cord was attached. Why did he put it on Gloss top of yourself? The yank and it came off. Where it had attached was a round wound with small glowing points within it. These tiny strands appear to be a neural network that SCP-1264 used to control these instances. There was some hardened white substance on the fingertips. You see this? This is the stuff holding the ship together. If we can work out what it is and how to destroy it, we can potentially break the ship apart into more manageable pieces. James rolled his eyes. Okay, Doc, but you just said I'm going after one guy? I can infiltrate without being detected. Kloss looked back at him. What in the world makes you think it's a guy? The lights in the room flashed red, and an alert tone came on over the intercom system. Alert. Incoming entity. Range 1.2 miles in closing. Dr. Kloss to the control room. Lieutenant Chen to the assembly room. Jane smiled and winked at Kloss. See you on the other side, Doc. And okay. took off at a run. He ran through the deep sea mobile base's umbilicus. It connected the different departments together. His heart now pounding and adrenaline flowing. Finally, he had been down here too long looking for this thing. It was time to do a little damage. Jones, LaSalle, Tornkey, you ready for a little swim? Did they the three nodded as they Seriously, their make fucking gear. Power Rangers. They came from MTF Gamma 6, deep feeders, and MTF Tau 11, can openers. They were under his command now, and he wasn't going to waste this opportunity at capturing SCP-1264. No visuals, no contact. James spoke through his intercom. Proceed north. It seems to have come to a hey. halt over that mountain range. Hold on. They continued forward. Jones and Tornkey in the new one-man attack subs. LaSalle and- Hold on. When they captured it. Uh, do, 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 they- Since we're missing that's some kind of- Can we- Here, because it was then towed under an armed escort. Yeah, they used their own ships. Like, big ships and submarines. They didn't fucking- They didn't use Power Rangers. Okay. And himself, preferring to go suit only. As they approached the range, they could see lights aimed at the sky. They took position just below the crest and slowly peeked over. Beneath them, sitting in a shallow crevice, was SCP-1264. They had been advised what to expect, but this was something else. The central body of the SCP was a USS Saratoga, an aircraft carrier. Branching off from it on either end was a German Prince Eugen hey. heavy cruiser, and the Nagata, uh -huh. a Japanese dreadnought. Rearward, pointing to the surface, was a USS Lamson, a destroyer, and the USS Apagon, submarine. It was that, a sight to be that is, a true. That is not a submarine. They just copy the same shit over and over again and put it together. Oh my god. I'm trying to get them one dash one instance. Oof. Yeah, oh my god. Like, granted, there's some difference between the ships, but they're all ships that would be above water, not below. Oh my god. Okay, this is starting to be a bit worse. My guy needs a better artist. <laughs> Mecha monstrosity of the deep.
Jones headed to the left and Torquay the right, relying on their submersible speed and agility to keep them out of trouble. This was Samson versus Goliath, but mechanized. The SCP lit up and turned Samson. its turrets and artillery at the submersibles. It proceeded to engage them, but despite its size, it was still World War II tech, and those MTF boys were well trained. They moved and dodged expertly. Let's go. Chen and LaSalle silently swam down and stayed low to avoid being seen by the anomaly. You As just they swam entered past, the spot. They saw more SCP 1264 1 okay. instances in their Navy diving suits, apparently repairing like, and controlling the ship's for various that systems. Ability. Each yeah. of them had a long umbilical stretching back towards that red light. This is how it controlled them. Where those cords went was where the true SCP lied. They reached the entrance to the carrier. Down the hall in the distance, they could see the pulsing red light. It wasn't far Oh my now. god. All along the floor and walls- We don't know what Dash 1 course. is! There must have been a hundred of them. The two men slowly walked down the path. From a passage on the right came two of those sea cucumber men. Chen opened fire and they went down quickly. Coming from the other side was another. LaSalle pulled out his knife and severed the umbilical. It immediately crumpled to the ground, seemingly dead. Up ahead was the hatch. They slowly approached, Chen signaling to LaSalle to open it. The umbilicals were all running through the gaps in the door. Whatever it was, was behind the door. As LaSalle pulled the door back, they heard a high-pitched shrill. LaSalle released the door and grabbed his ears in pain. It felt like the sound was coming from inside their own heads. Chen grabbed the door and threw it open. Chen! Chen! Wake up! He heard a loud clap and slowly opened his eyes. Kloss looked down at him with a smile. Thought we almost lost you this time. Too bad. What happened? Tornkey picked you up, just in time it seems. She got an alert that your vitals were low and came back for you. What about LaSalle? Kloss looked away. Jones? He's fine. He's debriefing. So what the hell happened? We're not sure yet. It seems it immobilized you somehow. It took off shortly after. We're still what? trying to get a fix on it. For it, now, I need you to rest up. It you doesn't have, have this ability. We'll need you back at full strength if we get a lock mm -hmm. on this thing. As Klaus walked out, Chen convulsed momentarily. He shook his head. What were those images? Just flashbacks of earlier. Means nothing. He rolled onto his side and tried to get some sleep. Oh my god. SCP-1264 is an amalgamation of once derelict warships yeah. and various pieces of flotsam and jetsam that have been adhered together by organic secretions. The main body of SCP-1264 is made up of five World War II era ships that were used as target ships as part of the Operation Crossroads atomic bomb test. What, the, performed what is the Leviathan doing here? And what is this fucker doing here? Bikini Atoll in 1946. What the fuck? SCP-1264 is maintained by a crew that has been designated SCP-1264-A. Each fits inside a US Navy standard rubber diving dress and are equipped with a Mark V diving helmet and weighted boots. SCP-1264-A are headless humanoid entities closely related to sea cucumbers. SCP-1264-A are also connected by a flexible arterial cord roughly That's 90 meters true. long that is in turn connected to SCP-1264's interior. SCP-1264-A displays a deep understanding of SCP-1264's mechanical and electrical systems. Yes. SCP-1264-A habitually performs repairs and maintenance with what is available within their designated areas. SCP-1264-A are characteristically slow, obstinate, and exhibit no real intelligence of their own. SCP he used the Wilhelm screen. Also secrete a strong <laughs> adhesive through their gloves that act as a waterproof sealant, binder, filler, and cement in order to maintain the structural integrity. Oh my gosh, this is hurting me. Of SCP-1264. All of SCP-1264's weapon systems are operated by SCP-1264-A. In turn, SCP-1264-A is commanded by a single entity designated SCP-1264-1. SCP-1264-1's appearance is unknown, and the only physical evidence for SCP-1264-1's existence are the arterial cords that connect SCP-1264-A to the ship's interior. 
These cords are lined with strands of neural tissue and do not originate from SCP-1264-A. This indicates that SCP-1264-A is directly connected to a separate biological entity, or that SCP-1264-1 is actually the collective consciousness of SCP-1264-A. That's true, we don't know. SCP-1264-1 has proven There's a a to be a hostile and skillful tactician of naval warfare. The problem with that is the Leviathan will be way bigger than this SCP. SCP-1264-1 has been reported in some cases to transmit radio signals via ELF radio. I that hope wouldn't happen. Chen Chen they only communicated through radio with another ship, not a person. Oh my god, this hurts. It's over. Thank fuck. Okay. They barely included anything in the autopsy report. They included some stuff, but most of this in important information was just kicked. Sorry for TV for the plot of SCP. Yes. As well, as well as they didn't even include this. Like the... This, like the, the entire... Showing it, like, actually communicating. They didn't show that either. Now, did they actually remove people? I don't think. They sure as hell added people. But I don't think anyone was removed. Double checking. Oh wait, yeah they did. Dr. W. Hermes. Completely removed. I don't know if too many people in SP were named. Yeah. The only person that was... That was actually named was completely removed. Not even mentioned once. I forget. That's fair, but book run, this was a long anomaly. That's completely fair. <laughs> oh, damn. So, literally, the only person in this anomaly they removed. I would give that a three because they did at least keep the license. Added gore or violence? Oh, I don't know. The first part of the f fucking video, they added a shitload of violence with the fucking Power Rangers. Oh my god. He removed the doctor for what I assumed to be his OC. Yeah. What do we rank the Power Rangers? Well, I can easily put a zero at the bottom here because no women were removed. Okay. Ugh. Hmm. We rank the fucking Power Rangers. Shut the fuck up, Facebook. I don't even use you. Fuck. I'm thinking three. Yeah. Because the ship did act normally. I'm going, in my opinion... I'm going to give it a four for deviation because one, the anomaly was not drawn correctly because yeah, because it didn't, it didn't show 
the ships correctly, but they lost the Power Rangers. Lost one of the Power Rangers, yeah. As well as they included some other bullshit. Which was like the, um... Uh, like the, the weird thing of Dash 1 being able to affect people and turn other into Dash 8 instances. That has not been confirmed. Like, I don't know where they're getting that information. So they added a whole bunch of shit that didn't need to be there. It's one of some things that needed to be fixed. Like, I'm not being bad at the, the artist, it's just that you, you only drew ships, not a submarine with it. Yeah. Yep, yeah. This would be a 35%. So we dropped it back down. That's not good. 